Hello everybody, it's Dana Sullivan, the Stampin' Chick, here with another Make It Monday. <laughs> How are you today, my friends? I hope you had a wonderful weekend. It was blazing hot here in East Tennessee. However, we had uh, a lot of fun this weekend, so, um, but I am happy to be here with you today on the last Monday of the month, which means that it is also time for the Stamper Showcase Blog Hop. So much fun. <laughs> so if you don't know about the Stamper Showcase Blog Hop, or if this is your first time here uh, watching me live or watching me on a replay later, welcome. Thank you all so much for being here with me this evening. I really appreciate it. My name is Dana Sullivan. I'm the Stampin' Chick. Uh, you can find me on most social media using the hashtag the Stampin' Chick right there. And... Um, I'm so excited to have you here this evening. Oh, I see so many folks are coming in. Yay! All right. So, uh, please leave a comment. Say hello. Let me know where you're from. I love seeing, hearing, and uh, visiting with everybody. And, of course, uh, don't forget to um, give a thumbs up, give some love, and be sure to share this video on your page because caring is sharing and your friends would love to join in, too. Hi there from Australia. I got to visit with you in Messenger the other day. That's wonderful. Hi, Charlotte. How's it going? Oh, so many people are here. Thank you. I love it. Well, I'm really excited because I have a beautiful, super, super adorable little card here to share with you. Hi, Carolyn from Michigan. How are you? Um, I am in love with this card, and there are multiple reasons for it. Number one, it's absolutely stinking adorable, right? Number two, it's a fancy fold card, which is absolutely fabulous. Hi, Carla. Hi, Angela. Thank you all so much for coming. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, I love fancy fold cards, and this one is a really simple one, but it looks terrific. And... Because this is the last Monday of the month, and it's the Stamper Showcase blog hop on my blog, which you can visit at thestampinchick.com, uh, you'll be able to see a whole handful of absolutely gorgeous uh, fancy fold projects, because that was our theme for this month. And in addition to that, everyone has put a PDF tutorial link on their blog. So if you head over to my website, thestampinchick.com, it'll be the first post right there at the top of the page for uh, Monday, what is this, June 27th. And <laughs> you'll be able to see my post. And then towards the bottom, you'll find a spot that says, download the PDF or uh, click to get PDF, something like that. And then uh, you'll see the rest of the blog hop below and every page that you go to will have a PDF for you to print off so that you can make your own collection of gorgeous um, fancy fold cards, which is so much fun, right? <laughs> okay. And then the other thing that I absolutely love about today's project is that it's showing you a sneak peek of upcoming celebration products. Yay! Do I have the brochure? I do. So I can't show you the inside, but I can show you the outside. Uh, it starts the 1st of July, which is in just a few days. That's actually what, Thursday, right? Friday. Sorry, Friday is the first. So this will start on Friday. And the celebration brochure, if you don't know, everything inside of this little booklet is free with a purchase. Okay, so the holiday catalog is coming out and it starts on the first as well. And then you'll be able to order from anything that's on my website, anything that's in the holiday catalog or the annual catalog or whatever, and earn these items for free, right? So cool. Okay, and so that is the next amazing thing about this project is that it's using two free celebration products that I'm going to show you this evening. Okay, so you're going to get a sneak peek of them. And of course, you're going to want to put them on your list because they're so stinking cute. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I digress. Here we go. 
So this fancy fold opens like this. And it has another super cute little hippo in there. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? I love it. And it says, aw, you really are the best. Love you a ton. I think it's so cute. And this is absolutely just so stinking adorable. And I'm going to show you how I did this fabulous little bow. I'll show you that too. Okay. All right. So here's what you're going to need. First of all, hippest hippos is the stamp set and you can see it's got three different absolutely stinking adorable little hippos and super cute sentiments that go along with it how about you're so hip <laughs> and you're always on point with the little ballerina isn't that adorable i love it and then what makes it even better is the hippo dies as you can see here uh the hippo dies are absolutely gorgeous as well okay so it cuts out each of the hippos and there are so many cool little things that you can add as well so you can give it little um what is that little goggles <laughs> and a snorkel there's some water drops how about a little party hat isn't that cute or an umbrella a bathtub a boat Oh my gosh, just such cute, cute dies. And the little hearts here too. So you can do um, sweetheart or love, friendship, whatever you want. And of course, some flowers and, and splish splashes. So just some really, really cute dies to add to the fabulousness of this stamp set. All right, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, and then for the card kit itself, we're going to need Flirty Flamingo cardstock. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Uh, Flirty Flamingo cardstock that measures six by five and a half, and we're going to score it at four and a quarter. And this is going to make the base of our card. Oh, my goodness. I almost matched, don't I? <laughs> All right, I didn't mean that, <laughs> but six by five and a quarter, or sorry, six by five and a half. I hope I said that right the first time. Six by five and a half, and then scored at four and a quarter will give you the um, measurement here. And then you'll need another piece of flirty flamingo that measures four by four inches, and we're going to score this one at one half of an inch. So it's going to give us a little tab here, and you can see that forms the base of our card right there okay so there's the card base then you're also going to need hi Andrew how's it going you're also going to need a piece of four inch by five and a quarter inch nope I lied to you sorry uh, that's four and yes four inches by five and a quarter inches oh my goodness though I think I actually have mine cut uh, four and an eighth by five and three eighths and this is going to be Excuse me, I got a scratchy throat there. This is going to be the inside panel of our card. So yeah, this one is cut at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And this is basic white cardstock. And so this little panel is going to go right here. And it's going to come across just like this. So we're going to be careful to not put anything in these spaces because we want it to be a surprise when they open it up, right? Okay, and then... I have a couple of pieces of designer series paper. This is from the Hues of Happiness designer series paper. It's got that beautiful floral print on the back side. These, these papers um, in this collection are so pretty. They've got just a rainbow of colors on almost every single one of the pages. They're just beautiful. Um, <clears throat> so this paper is uh, one and five eighths by five and three eighths, which as you can imagine is going to fit right there on the front of the card. And then this piece measures uh, three and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And that's going to go on this layer. So now we have the front of our card, right? Okay, then we're also going to need a piece of Flirty Flamingo cardstock. Uh, this is going to be, I think, approximately 3 by 3 inches. Let me just double check. Yeah, 3 by 3 inches. And uh, hi, Kathy. Um, you're going to use this piece um, to die cut the second largest 
of the scalloped layering circles dies. Okay, so the layering circles are what I use. This is the second largest scallop. And then the white piece is two and three quarters. Yeah, two and three quarter inch square. And I die cut it with the second largest of the stylish shapes dies. Now, if you have not seen the stylish shapes dies yet, um, hi Rehab, how are you? Um, I'm not sure that I said that right and I'm so sorry. Um, let me grab the stylish shapes dies because they are so pretty and I absolutely love them. They're in the annual catalog. You love the color f and you're from Virginia. That's wonderful. We're neighbors. All right. And here they are. So I was really sad when they got rid of the um, stitch shapes dies. And if you've been following me for a while, you remember I had an almost meltdown <laughs> over how many of the different um, uh, die frames that they had gotten rid of. I was so sad, <laughs> but, uh, Stampin' Up! never disappoints, and I, um, I know that, but it's just sad to lose some of my favorites, uh, but these are the Stylish Shapes dies, and they do a terrific job of taking the place of some of those dies that recently went away. So, what I'm talking about is the second largest of this stitched circle one here, and, uh, you know, I, I absolutely love these dies. If you don't have them yet, you definitely want to put them on your list. Um, they're absolutely gorgeous. And uh, as you can see, there's some banners, squares, and circles. So you get a really nice collection of the dies. Um, so it's absolutely fantastic. And then, of course, the layering circles dies. You guys probably all have those there fantastic and I use the second largest of the scalloped ones for those as well so um, you can see a lot of possibilities with those dies I use them tons I absolutely love them but uh, for this project we're using the second largest scalloped and the second largest stitched for each of those die sets okay so there we go and then you're also going to need a scrap of basic white cardstock that's big enough for uh, your little hippos to go on. Um, and this one right here, because we're going to color it and then die cut it out because that's the front, front little piece of our card, which you can see right here. Okay. And then I know this is going to just absolutely be totally shocking. Um, for those who have followed me for a while, you know, I'm, I'm pretty thrifty when it comes to my supplies. Um, uh, at least I try to be anyways. Uh, <laughs> this card is going to use 42 inches. Yes, 42 inches of the crinkle seam binding ribbon. Okay, so I've cut it one 42 inch length to start with. And then you're going to split it, or as we say, when we're cutting boards, you're going to rip it up the center. And uh, I'm going to use my um, fabric snips here, and I'm just cutting right up the middle. Now, this ribbon is a little persnickety about this because it's so lightweight and fine, um, but you don't have to be, like, perfectly straight. In fact, it's, it's wonderful if you're not. Um, but you just want to go basically up the middle, okay? So I'm going to come from this end and see if it'll hold still for me a little better. And right there at the end, I went ahead and pre-cut most of that so you wouldn't have to sit and watch me do this for 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you've got two lengths now of 42 inches, and then um, we're going to line these ends up, and we're actually going to cut it in half again so that we have four lengths of 21 inches okay so i hope i haven't confused anybody there but you're wanting um some nice threads here and then um this is going to look absolutely gorgeous when we tie it into a bow so make sure you stay tuned for that 
Uh, this is a fabulous little bow that I learned actually from another Stampin' Up! friend of mine, Tammy Wilson. She does the most incredible bows I have ever seen ever on the planet. And uh, she taught me the trick of um, ripping up the center of the bow of the uh, ribbons. And I'll tell you, my world has never been the same. I, <laughs> I just love it because I love that shabby look. I love the uh, texture and the the fraying and everything. I, I just love it. It's perfect. Okay. So now that we have all of our supplies together, all right, and then, oh, the last thing that you're going to need is the 2021-2023 opal rounds, uh, the in-color opal rounds, and I'm using the soft succulent ones because I thought that looked really good in contrast with the um, flirty flamingo, and uh, it matches really well with the designer series paper, okay? So we're going to be using these as embellishments. All right, let's go ahead and get this show on the road, shall we? I have some Memento ink. I have Pool Party ink. I have a blending brush. We're going to be using this to make this nice little spotlight background behind the, the hippo. And the reason for this is because if we just glued the hippo directly onto this circle, it would be really stark and plain. But when we add just that little spotlight behind it, it gives some depth and separation from the background, and it makes it look like there's just a little highlight behind the image piece, right? And so it really brings attention to our focal, which is the hippo itself, okay? All right, so let me grab, um, let me grab a block for all oh, you're the best. Okay, and then we need the little ballerina hippo, and if you've never assembled our stamps before, I'll show you that right quick as well, because it's really simple, okay? You pop them out of the little piece here, pull this backing off, just like so. Find the image that matches. Hi, Sue. How's it going? From Arizona. I love it. Okay. How hot are you there, Sue? I know it is blazing hot here in East Tennessee. But are you up in the mountains or are you down in the Phoenix area? That's the question, huh? Okay. I'm going to line this up with my image here. Just like so. And then when I peel it, I can lift this side and pull the backing off here. And my image is stuck beautiful. Okay. Oh, yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah. You know, I always say I would like it to be sunny and 65 all year long. Oh, you're in Glendale. My Nana loved Glendale. I believe she used to live there. And uh, she used to visit Phoenix and Flagstaff at various points in the year. Okay, now I'm going to put the sentiment on the um, sticker, too. So just the same way as I did the other. Give it a, go a good, firm press. There we go. Just like that. And then that's done. Okay, now I have already stamped my inside panel with the other hippo but you would do him the exact same way all right let me move these out of the way and i need a couple of blocks here we go so these are very simple you're just sticking them directly on i love oops i need a bigger one i love our cling mount stamps so much better than the ones we had before because these really stay stuck. You can see I have to put my fingernail under the edge and then peel it gently to get it off. But it makes them reusable, makes your blocks usable for multiple stamp sets. So you can have one of each block and not have to have 50 different blocks, which is great. Okay. Now I'm taking my center section here and memento ink 
And I've already stamped the hippo, so I'm not going to worry about that. But I am going to take my little sentiment here and straighten it back up because, woo, that was crooked. That is a recipe for disaster when I already can't lean over the top of it, huh? <laughs> okay, tap, 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 not smush, smush, smush. And you're going to come right up here, and I'm going to try to make it as straight and centered as I can without my head going over it. There we go. Okay. And then while we have the black ink out, I'm going to grab this scrap piece and my little hippo girl here. And stamp. There we go. Now, I will tell you that our inks dry really quickly. However, when I'm doing uh, stamp and blend coloring, hi Nina. Uh, when I'm doing stamp and blend coloring, I really like to stamp my outline for a second, set it off to the side, and get nice and dry first before I start coloring. So I've stamped my little hippo girl. Now I'm going to go and assemble the card base itself and we'll come back to the hippo again okay so we have all of these pieces and I'm gonna bring in my stamp and seal and uh, I've got to get it started because I just put a new one on here there we go and then this piece is just gonna line up on this section here let me turn it so I can see so I can see I tell you, the older you get, <laughs> the more you need to be right over the top of it with perfect lighting. <laughs> All right, and then the next one here. Okay. Paper. Tuck in that little piece of adhesive that went over the line. It got overzealous there. All right, here we go. Very nice. Okay, now then, I'm going to put adhesive on the inside of that half inch strip right here, okay? Um, <clears throat> can I say the measurements again? Um, Sorry, I can't read what that says. Uh, the measurements for what, hon? Okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this piece over the top. Now, my sticky is on the half-inch strip here, okay? So nothing is stuck down. Um, but this way, I'm able to line it up top to bottom where I want it. And I'm going to put my score line, my fold, right up against the edge here. So I'm just going to go kind of like this and I want it to be just a little north of center because it's amazing the way that our eyes work if something is dead center it looks very uniform and I don't want to say plain but it's very uniform and straightforward but if you make something just slightly off center I mean just the slightest little bit your eyes pick up on that and it draws the interest in so, oh, I see what you're saying, Miss Teresa. Uh, you know what? Go visit my blog, uh, thestampinchick.com, uh, here in a bit, and you'll be able to print out a PDF tutorial of this whole thing, okay? So uh, you'll be able to print out a tutorial. It's got all of the measurements and everything there, um, and you'll be able to have it all together at once, okay? All right, so I have this here, and I've got it just a little north of center. Now, I like the way it looks, and you can tell it's just a minuscule bit north, right? It's not much, but it is enough to make your eyes notice, I promise. Okay, and then I'm going to take this flap and just fold it over. Now, my flap is exactly where I want it to be when I put it on the card, okay? So now I can come back in with my adhesive. And I'm going to get it really good on that side uh, because I want to make sure that it doesn't lift. So uh, I'm going to add just a bit more than I might otherwise. I'm going to keep that folded and I'm going to stick it right down in the middle. Okay. Oh, you're most welcome, sweetheart. There we go. All right. And now our card base 
is done, right? And it really is amazing. That teeny tiny little bit, try it, you'll see, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. It's amazing how our eyes work. Okay, now that we have that done, we need to bring in this piece right here, and I'm gonna bring my little scrap paper in, and I have my pool party ink and my blending brush and I'm just going to give it some little swipes and I like to focus on the outer edges of my ink pad when I do this because I don't know about you but I like to uh, ink my image right in the middle of my ink pad every single time and what that does is it removes the ink from the middle but then you still have all this ink around the edge so in order to get a really good clean image you really want to stamp all around your ink pad, right? So you're dispersing the ink and you're picking it up in a more even manner. So I like to just go back over the edges with my blending brush um, to pick up my ink because I know that it's um, I know that it's going to be good that way. Okay. All right, now uh, I tap it off just a little to get the harshness out, but I'm going to start in the very middle because anything that's harsh will be covered up by my little hippo there. So I'm going to start in the center and I'm just going to keep working in circles and then kind of expand as I go. Okay, now I can turn a little and bring it out. Most of my color tends to come from the bottom half of it. Uh, hey Luann, how's it going darling? Um, so I don't know if that's because of the way that I draw color or what, but anyway, it just happens that way. So I tend to lean my brush a little bit that direction. But as you can see here, I'm just building it up a bit by swirling it around and I'm turning my circle so that I can get my color to kind of expand just a bit. Um, I don't want the color to go all the way to the outer edges. That's not what I'm trying to do here. What I'm trying to do is just add a little bit of a halo, okay? So now that I've got this done, uh, I believe that's going to be maybe just a little bit more here. Let me draw up just a little more. And just to the out a little bit. I want to make sure that there's enough of it here that it shows beyond the image of the hippo, but I don't want it to go all the way to the edge. Okay, so there we go. I think that's probably pretty good. A little bit more over here, maybe. Thank you, Carla. I appreciate that. All right, there we go. Now we can always come back and add more once we get our little hippo done if we need to, okay? So I'm going to set that off to the side. Now my hippo is pretty well dry enough that I can go ahead and color her. So what I have is um, the light gray granite ink, I mean Stampin' Blend. I have the light and dark flirty flamingo. And I have light and dark smoky slate, okay? Now, if you've watched my videos before when I've done Stampin' Blends, I always give the disclaimer that I am not a, uh, I am not a coloring master when it comes to the Stampin' Blends. But, um, you know, I, I like to be very plain and basic, but I think it looks okay. So, oh, I see that there's a connection issue. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I live out in the middle of nowhere land and sometimes, especially when there's rain clouds or storms moving through, my signal gets a little wonky. So um, I hope that I'm beating this, but we'll see here, okay? So I'm going to keep going. Um, but again, also, uh, you can find my, my project and the PDF tutorial that you can print out on my website, thestampinchick.com, and you'll be able to print out all of the ones from the other blogs in the hop as well, okay? So make sure that you go over and uh, print those out, all right? Okay, I'm going to take the uh, light gray granite ink, and for this one, I'm going to take uh, the front of her nose and her belly. So all of the lighter spots, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just coming along, coloring it in. Absolutely nothing fancy about me here. Just filling in the space, all right? And then remember, underneath her little tutu 
is also the rest of her belly. So <laughs> when I colored the first one, I, I missed that and went, oh, that's the rest of her belly. So, <laughs> oh, Dion, hi, how are you? Hi, Elaine, how are you? Oh, I'm glad that it's okay for you. Okay, good. So maybe it's just some people in some spots. Um, I hope that it's okay. And it could be that it comes in and goes out uh, a little bit here and there. So hopefully it'll hang with us and uh, we'll be able to do this okay without much trouble. Um, we have fiber internet coming to our little neck of the woods, but it's coming so slowly. It is so slow. It is about a mile down the road from my house. I can see where they've ended it and they're, I don't know what they're waiting on, but they're waiting on something or they're doing something else, I don't know, but I keep hoping it'll hurry up and get here. <laughs> All right, now I'm taking the Dark Smoky Slate ink. I keep calling it ink, I'm sorry, the Dark Smoky Slate marker, and I'm coloring her little nails, okay, right here. And honestly, I'm just lightly tapping, as you can see, because they're so small. Um, and I want to make sure that I don't go over the lines. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm using the light smoky slate for the rest of her actual body. Okay, so I'm going to start down here at the bottom so that I don't forget she has little slippers on. And I don't mind to cover up the laces because they're just a quick little thin line. So it'd be really hard to color those pink but I want to make sure that that little bottom section stays plain because that is um, the toe of the slipper. So we want to make sure we color that. And then just like with the belly, she's got a little bit of her body showing underneath the tutu here. So we want to color that in. Notice again at this point I am still not worrying about highlights and shadows and all of that business. I am just coloring this girl in, okay? There we go. Get this arm. And then this arm. There we go. You know, there's something really therapeutic about coloring images with these markers. If you haven't tried these markers yet, you really should. They are beautiful. And they make anybody look like they know how to color, even if they don't. <laughs> so they're really good about covering the lines. Like you don't see the marker lines. Uh oh. Excuse me. Excuse me again. Oh my goodness. As you can tell, the pollen is out too. Ugh. All right, there we go. Okay. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by that sneeze. Uh, they're wonderful about fading the marker lines together so that they've got a really nice, clean look when they dry, very smooth. Um, and now that I have the little hippo colored, if I wanted to, I could come back in with my same markers. Um, you know, to use light and dark markers to make highlight and shadow, yes, of course you could do that. Uh, but you can absolutely um, use the same marker over again, and that will uh, give you a nice shadow as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking that uh, light gray granite, and I'm just going right there over her neck area again and I'm gonna leave that alone, okay? And then this time I am gonna use the light and dark inks. I'm using the dark Flirty Flamingo marker first, and I'm gonna come along right here where I think her arm may cause a shadow and her head to cause a shadow. And I'm trying not to make straight lines because straight lines don't fade very well. Okay, and then I'm going to use the light flirty flamingo, and I'm just going to go right back over the top of that. And as I do, I'm going to focus a little bit more on uh, the top section than the bottom because I want to go over the dark to blend it in really nicely. Okay, so there we go. And then I need the dark again. 
And I'm going to use the bullet tip because it's such a small space. And I'm going to color her little slippers here. Okay. Just like so. All right, beautiful. Now, the hippo dies are absolutely fabulous and will cut her out perfectly. And of course, through the magic and wonder of television, I have one already pre cut. <laughs> All right, so let me set that off to the side and let us finish our card, shall we? Okay, so these two layers are going to be stuck directly onto each other. So I'm going to take some of my stamp and seal on the back of the white layer and attach it directly to my flirty flamingo layer, just like that. Okay. And I can see that there is enough green behind her here. So that's perfect. I'm going to add Stampin' Dimensionals to the back of her and the back of my scalloped circle here. All right. And then for her here and here. Very good. Okay. Now then, there you go. And then I'm going to put this right in the middle and then we'll put our little hippo on. Uh, Carla says she's got to get a hold of her rep from Stampin' Up so she can catch up. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and if you are here watching and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demo, I would love to be your demo, and I can help you out with anything that you see here or get you new catalogs if you don't have any yet. Just leave me a comment down below, uh, and if I'm missing anybody's comments on here, sometimes uh, it's weird how... Um, Facebook sometimes doesn't let me see the comments or the comments scroll a little too fast and I miss it. Um, but I always go back and look at the comments after the live is over. So uh, if you need anything from me, if you need any supplies or you want to take advantage of the buy one, get one half off special for all of our kits right now, you're welcome to message me. I'll get you a link. And if you need catalogs, I can do that too. Hi, Miss Brenda. How are you? Hi, Miss Deb. How's it going? Thank you so much. Um, okay. So now that I have this done, I'm going to grab my little in color, uh, opal rounds. These things are quickly becoming a favorite of mine because I mean, look at how gorgeous they are. Does this even show how pretty they are? They've got a nice little flecky shimmer inside each one of them. And they're just, they're beautiful. I love them. Okay. I'm going to take this one here and come down here with it. And I'm going to take one of the little ones and put right above there. And then I'm going to get another of the little ones and put it up here near the top. Okay. So now I have my... Uh, dots and now it's time to do that fabulous bow that I know you've all been waiting for okay absolutely gorgeous let's go back and take a look at it as it's finished already you can see it's got all of the ruffle and fluff and it's just so cute and it really does I mean it really makes the card doesn't it it's gorgeous okay so <clears throat> again this started out as one 42 inch length of the white crinkle seam binding ribbon and then I ripped up the center uh, through the entire length to make it two skinny strips of 42 inches and then I folded it in half and cut it so that it made four 21 inch lengths of the skinny strips of ribbon okay and as you can see my cutting is not necessarily straight there are some little rough and jagged spots and that is perfect because that <clears throat> excuse me that adds to the texture of this ribbon um, and the beautiful bow that it makes okay let me grab a sip right quick my goodness okay sorry about that all right so you're actually going to make this just, just like, um, okay, just like this. So I'm going to take 
my ends and I'm trying to line that one up just a little bit better there. Okay, I'm gonna do it like this. Now I have done this bow before. Um, I'm not sure that I've ever done it with four strands on live before, so this will be fun. Bear with me, you guys that watch live videos, you know sometimes the bows don't always uh, participate when you're on a live, so we'll see. <laughs> I may be setting myself up for failure here. Okay, so I'm making um, a double loop bow. And what I'm doing is I'm going over this finger and around this finger. This middle finger is just a spacer to keep these fingers the same distance apart. Okay, so I'm actually just wrapping around the first one and the third one. So I've wrapped over the first one, around the third one, back over and around the first one, around the third one, and back up. So now at this point, I have two loops on this finger, two loops on this finger, a tail down here, and a really long tail up here, okay? And I'm going to take this tail, and I'm going to try to hold that down just a little bit here. I'm going to move that middle finger back. Now you see why it was there as a spacer. I'm going to bring those tails all the way around. I'm going to shed some of my tails here. Okay. And then bring it around one more time. Get all of my little tails there. Okay. Pull it snug. And I'm going to tie it into a knot right here. Okay. So hold those tails. Now this takes a little, a little finesse and finagling because we've got so many tails to worry about. All right. But there we go. And then one more, just to make sure it holds tight. And you can see I've got a little more tail on this one end, but that gives me room to breathe, right? To be able to do things like this. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And then we're going to give it another little tug. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to carefully pull it off. Now this is not the kind of bow that you can finagle too much with the loops themselves because the way that it is tied, um, they'll come loose. So if you start pulling tails, you're going to pull it from this side, okay? So be happy with how your loops look. And let me trim off my ends there. And I'm going to grab a glue dot. Uh, my hands are flexible. <laughs> well, it's actually more about practice. <laughs> more about practice. Okay, and now I'm going to put the little glue dot just right here uh, at the corner. And I'm kind of balling it up a little bit because I don't want it to stick out past the knot of the, um, of the bow. Okay. And then I'm going to put it on right there. So stinking cute. And then give it a little fluff. Isn't that just the most adorable thing ever? And now it looks like I need to trim it up just a little more. So I'll go ahead and do that. I really don't like things to hang past my card. Just to make it easier, uh, you know, to get it in and out of the envelope. So there we go. Okay. Beautiful. I love it. I hope you do too. What do you think, folks? Is it nice? Do you like it? How about that bow? Super fabulous, right? Okay, friends, there you have it. Now remember, head over to my website, thestampinchick.com. Get today's uh, project PDF tutorial printed out. Follow the hop around and print out each of the tutorials that are on each of the blogs. Every one of them has one, so you should have, I believe there's half a dozen or so there. Uh, hi, Julie. How are you? Um, so you can get uh, each of the tutorials there. They're absolutely amazing. The designers that we have on the Stamper Showcase blog hop are just phenomenal. 
They're hand-picked because they do amazing, beautiful work, and you're just going to love all of the projects, okay? So anyway, head over there, get the tutorials. Now, if you would like to have catalogs that you don't have, you don't have a demonstrator, let me know. I have a couple of items to show you right quick, so don't leave me. Uh, I've got the other celebration items to share with you. So even though I can't show you inside the celebration brochure, I can show you the products, okay? So here we go. Uh, stylish sketches. This is a super, super cute little hand sketched um, stamp set. Cute ducks, the fox, and I believe that's a fig. It looks like a fig. And then uh, some texture, absolutely gorgeous. The amazing phrasing stamp set. This one's a lot of fun. Woohoo! <laughs> amazing. Hey, oops. <laughs> this is so me. <laughs> It's got lots of fun little sentiments, and I love that they are handwritten looking, so they're so adorable. And then there is Wonderful World. This is a bundle, a stamp and paper bundle. I love when they do this. I haven't opened the paper yet, uh, which I can do here with you. Uh, but I love, 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 love the irises. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Now, somebody who knows more than me about flowers, what is that flower? Can someone tell me that? I see a rose. I see an iris. I've got that. What is this? Anybody know? Okay, while you're telling me that, I'm going to go ahead and open this paper so I can share it with you, okay? Let me scoot these off to the side right quick and uh, open my paper. So, Celebration and the Holiday Catalog start on Friday. As I had mentioned, um, it starts on Friday, so as of Friday, July 1st, you'll be able to order from the upcoming holiday catalog. You'll still be able to order from the new annual catalog, and you'll be able to earn these celebration items for free. So, stay tuned for that, okay? All right, here we go with this paper, and also, just quick, so I can cover this up, <laughs> screenshot this uh, host code. If you'd like to place an order, I would love, 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 love to have you place an order with me. I am almost to the level of being able to start a countdown for uh, how close I am to earning the incentive trip, and I am so stinking excited. I, I just can't I can't help myself. I am so excited, but I still need some help. So uh, if there's anything I can get you, please, please place an order and uh, I will send you a little something, something to say thank you as well. And I appreciate each and every one of you. All right, here we go. Here's the paper. It's so pretty. All right. Oh, beautiful. I love this. So this kind of pattern is really soft and subtle, so it's great to put behind a nice big focal image <laughs> like that. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Oh, that's so pretty. So, so pretty. Okay, now are these foxgloves? Somebody, somebody who knows. These are lilies. Um, is that a foxglove? And then what's this one? I don't know that one. Okay. Oh, oh gosh. Look at how gorgeous this is. Oh, see, isn't that beautiful? Fussy cutting around these and then putting them on some kind of a frame. You know what? Fussy cutting around these and doing that same spotlight technique, right? Behind them on a background panel would be so pretty. With this as a background paper, oh my goodness, this looks like my Nana's wallpaper. <laughs> oh, pretty. I love it. So we've got some gorgeous floral images on the front and some fantastic background papers on the back. How cool is that? Love it. Oh gosh, that is just so pretty. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Okay. There's that one. Pretty. I'm loving it. And then I love the smaller ones of the images too. So nice. Irises are my absolute favorite. I have an entire flower bed in my front yard that is dedicated to irises. 
and um, and a peony plant that my mother-in-law gave me, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. Oh, I love this. Love it! All right, this is super pretty, isn't it? Gorgeous paper. Okay. All right, so of course you know this is going to be on your list, right? You want this one. And it's a uh, rubber stamp. It's got the three images, a leaf, and then a little... Um, a little stem for the rose so that's really cool you can add some dimension there very cute oh I love it okay friends I hope that you enjoyed tonight's video thank you all so much for coming I really appreciate it so if you like the project give me a thumbs up give me a heart be sure to share my video you know even if you de uh, can't don't or already have another demonstrator just sharing my posts and my videos is a humongous huge 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 help and I really appreciate it it gets me seen more and then uh, Facebook land says oh people like her so they share me with other people so I would love for you to share my videos and posts so thank you all so much for hanging out and visiting with me this evening oh it's been so much fun thank you I appreciate it don't forget to head over to the stampinchick.com and get your PDF tutorials for this one and all of the other absolutely stunning uh, fancy fold cards okay all right guys have a wonderful wonderful night and until next time bye for now